you may want to go a little more right there than I did. I skid my slider just a stitch. This was supposed to be off limits to off road or motorized vehicles. Uh, like the side areas, or you mean that left around the big hole? This whole trail, there was a big sign that we passed when we entered that said no motorized vehicles, I thought. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, been running trucks on it for years. It might be, maybe there's a maybe there's a part of the section back there that's not for like quads or something. I know there's usually different regulations about our trucks versus those. Got it. The first campsite on the left is pretty clean. Somebody even made an impromptu look like a broom with a piece of pine, pine branch on it. Interesting. Correct on that. 
Uh, there's an extra process when you when you do lift it. You have to be careful um, to not. This campsite's pretty clean too. Uh, you have to be careful to not let the KDSS, the piston, will actually come right out, and then it'll splash fluid all over the place and be a giant mess. Um, so as far as I know, you can use all the same lifts, uh, all the same suspension, aftermarket suspensions, but it's a different installation process. Got it. Yeah, one of my neighbors bought one that had it, and uh, I was helping him put his sliders on. And I'm sitting right there looking at this spot, you know, and it's right behind the driver front tire where, you know, when you drop off of something, that's where you're going to land. And I'm looking at these two hydraulic lines under the, under the frame, and I'm like, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> hey, for this obstacle right here, do you think I should go far right to avoid hitting this rock? I saw you just barely cleared. Tire. Put your driver's side tire, your two driver tires, on top of it. Actually, if, if I, I try it, if you need a spot, let me know. I can run back. I got a spot right here I can park. Just hitting that big rock. I think I got it, though. Yeah, good rule of thumb. The uh, the best uh, the best place to go if you have to go over it. I mean, if you can go around it, that's good too. Um, but the best place to go over something tall like that is on your tires. Oh, this A-track is awesome. It's coming in to kick right there. Yeah, that little notchy section, yeah, it's great for that. Guys, I'm not seeing any trash at this next campsite either. I wonder if somebody didn't come and clean it. Here, you, you can come left. I, I just, I looped it to check out the, um, check out the campsite. Hold on, back up and go to your right. You're trying to go over a big boulder. There you go.
Ready. Go ahead. Little driver, driver. Yeah, there you go. You're about to be on that bump. I'll watch your steps. Yeah, it looked just like his and got hung up. <laughs> Woohoo, you're sliding. You're sliding. <laughs> hey. Over here? Yeah. So what's going to happen, that high rock on the right is going to lift the front of the truck up, and the front left is going to come up off the ground. And then you're going to see it just, once it once it loses traction, it's just going to start to spin. Okay. And that's, you don't have any track on I, I don't have any track on. <laughs> uh, okay, so eight track is on. So what you'll notice is that one's going to start to slip, and then you'll hear the brake hit, and you'll see it just kind of hurt and jerk.
<laughs> I don't know about that. No, no, you, you don't have to do this one. I, I was just showing you. Okay. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're pretty
had to do a recovery, you're in a really narrow spot just on that shelfy part. And uh, my recovery buddies had to do a recovery up there a couple of years ago. The guys Jeep rolled all the way down. Yeah, I was I was actually telling Mike about that. Um, that I, I don't think I would feel comfortable doing that in a full-size vehicle. I've done it, like I said, four or five times. That was the route we always came to do Red Cone. So when we do Red Cone, we park outside of Montezuma, go through St. John's, go to the top of Radical Hill, down Radical Hill, and then over Red Cone uh, through Webster. But I don't think I would ever do that in a full-size vehicle because you're way off camera. Yeah, I haven't done it. I think the last time I did it was probably five, six years ago. And yeah, that, that narrow spot really sketched me out. So I'm with you. I, I don't really need to do that in a full-size vehicle again. Yeah, the crazy part, and I'm sure your sure your number. I mean, there's there's jeeps you could have afforded for the for the same price, but that was always the crazy part to me is you end up spending on those things pretty much as much as what you'd be into one of these for. Uh, one of my one of my buddies, my coworkers, has a uh, four seater turbo S. Mine was pretty modest. It was a 2017 two seater XP1000, and I think I probably with all the mods and everything probably got 25 in it total. Um, but I've got one friend that has a Turbo S that is, he's probably got a 55 in, and another that has a Turbo S that he's got maybe 17. There's a campsite here to the right, uh, but I don't think there's enough room for all of us. Give me one second, I'm gonna go spec it real quick.
um, in the standalone, and everybody's like, FJ, FJ. And then you see it next to the Tacoma, and it's way smaller. So, yeah, it is a lot more like, if you remember the Scion XB, it's going to be something like that, like a small, boxy, like, little activity vehicle. If they ever make it, it's a concept at this point. And, and your trucks, they're both, and this is 
with our trucks up here. Nobody really goes by that. Um, but there's a point where if you've gone 120, 130,000 miles and your transmission is fine, then normally the dealers will tell you don't do it. Um, but if you've got a little bit of like herky jerky whatever, um, before about 60 or 80, they'll usually tell you to do it. Yeah, I think I may have had this change recently, just uh, changes and stuff, but I don't know I had a bunch of them. I had a Toyota Specialist, I took my FJ2 when I first got it because I every time I buy a used car I have all the fluids changed and he told me never do more, never do a full flush, just do the drain and fill every 30,000 miles or else uh, uh, sometimes a full flush can cause the transmission to fail somehow. I've heard that before too, just in general. Um, I don't know how accurate it, it is. I've heard that when you have older fluid in there, especially, that flushing that fluid can cause some 